Looking out on the fields of Ireland, I could only imagine the abandoned locations ahead. Previously, we took you through the forgotten remnants of three amazing lost mansions of Ireland. Today, we continue the trip and bring you three more houses with even more remarkable pasts. Number four, the Tower House. A little known 1400s tower house, this small castle is attached to newer buildings that once acted as a visitor center. Built by descendants of the Norman conquerors who came from Ireland, it was a fortified base of operations for the over 40,000 acres the family owned. In the 15 and 1600s, the house was improved with more fireplaces and decorations. The current house you see attached is from the 1700s and was used as the main residence until it was abandoned. Truly given up to nature, the outbuildings are now derelict and while the tower stays strong, the days here may be numbered. It's amazing to think that there are more than 2,000 of these on the island. This is certainly one of the better preserved despite its state of abandonment. This one is even for sale. A distinctive barn with a perfectly placed pumpkin in front of it lays on the property edge. This long shed stretches some ways with a skeletal roof frame, creating an interesting geometry. A twisted tree overlooks the scene, giving the place an eerie touch. The front door, vividly green, is still in a great state of preservation. The sun starts to descend, and we bid this house a final goodbye and head to the next location. Number 5. The Martyr's Mansion This mansion is most famous for the man who was known to have hidden here. The house was first a tower in the 1400s, which was improved in the 1500s. In 1760, the large and looming extension was added, creating a real mansion. During the 1600s, it was thought to have been the refuge for a rebel Catholic, Oliver Plunkett, who had been a priest. His arrest following the Popish plot to kill the King of England led to his capture and trial in London, where he was hung, drawn, and quartered in a trial widely thought to be a sham. He was the last Catholic executed for their religion in Ireland and his head is now displayed at a church where he's now elevated as a saint. Looking in on the approach, it's clear that much of the structure inside is gone. While inhabited until the 1940s or so, it is now a near shell. A raging fire ripped through the place in 2000 and left little in its wake.
Looking inside, you can see remnants of what once was. Plasterwork, fireplaces, and the outline of floor and beams above. This is one of the more dangerous houses I visited. If you've wondered why I create a pseudonym for each place I visit with you, it's due to the well-known phenomenon that no matter how careful you are in revealing a place eventually the wrong person will visit, being told by a third party, or seeing a careless post, and hundreds of years of history can be destroyed in a moment. As a rule, urban explorers today seek to keep these events from occurring as there's too much to lose. Even the association with a saint was not enough to save this hall from such a fate. Number 6. The Murder-Suicide Mansion Our final mansion today is a lonely square shape in a sea of fields. Built in the late 1700s, this Georgian house was expanded in the 1800s with Tudor revival features and pillars. Its nearby grinding mill ponds still are used for leisure activities. The early owners also grew trees and ornamental shrubs across the grounds. The last of the family line died in 1966 and it was sold in the 1970s and left to rot away. However, this strange little mansion rising over the fields isn't known for these mundane things, but for one incident that shocked the country in 1902. After leaving the house, I learned that it was the site of a famous lover's quarrel that ended in a murder-suicide. During a shooting party at the mansion, the butler, who had been employed elsewhere and engaged to the current maid, confronted her about an affair. A fight broke out with her current lover and the butler, who then stormed off. Later, three shots were heard from a room, and the major who owned the house at the time rushed in to find the maid and butler both dead. He had hidden a gun and ammunition previously and then retrieved them to kill her and then himself. The current home sits near a ruin with floors and ceilings nearly gone. Upon entrance, the white pillars peak from under intense overgrowth that has started to nearly hide the memory of the horrible events that took place here over a hundred years ago. The sun starts to dip and we leave the place as we found it. I hope you've enjoyed these last three amazing lost mansions of Ireland and join me again next time at a forgotten sanatorium as I continue across an abandoned world. Subscribe and explore with me today 